Today we're going to be talking about the Cardinal Scale Model 201 Weight Transmitter. Uh, this is a technical training uh, technical training session. However, this is not going to be something that's really in depth. The idea is to give a technical overview of what the 201 is capable of uh, to help you, the person listening to this, uh, have a better feel for what the 201 can and cannot do. Kind of a basic outline, we're going to go through some of the features, uh, the selling points, things like that of the 201. We're going to go through some technical specifications. We're going to go through the available communication types. There are several, so we'll be spending a, a fair amount of time there. We're going to do some setup via the web page. We'll see how that works. It's a really nice feature. And we're going to also uh, see a little bit of a demo of a couple of the modes of operation of the 201. As far as features, the 201 has a fairly small profile. This is it. Not very big. Um, it's intended to be mounted in a cabinet, um, usually communicate with PLCs, which we'll talk about some more of that later. Um, as far as the mounting, uh, it has a DIN rail connection uh, that it mounts on a DIN rail inside a cabinet. And the display can also be mounted remotely. So as you can see in the uh, picture on the screen, um, you don't see the metal parts, the gray part of the enclosure, you just see the display. That's because those displays have actually been removed from the 201 and have been mounted um, onto the front of the cabinet. The 201 also has a side mount option. Um, it, so instead of seeing this in the cabinet, you would see this. Um, there's actually the hole here as it would have a different DIN rail connector on it. Uh, so you would just see this in the cabinet. That way, if you're really tight for space in an enclosure, you can save some space that way. As I mentioned, there are several built-in communication options with the 201. Uh, again, we'll be spending more time about that later, so I'll just kind of leave it where it's at for now. The display has several background colors. We'll see that in just a moment. Uh, it can be very handy for different purposes. Uh, there are different modes of operation the 201 can use. Uh, so the 201 can actually do some of the work for you instead of just getting weighed and passing it along. And then again, the web-based setup. Uh, we'll see that in more in detail later. We'll also talk about a fairly new feature that we have for the 201 webpage. Um, we'll talk about that more later as well. As far as technical specifications, the 201 is an INTEP certified weight indicator. Uh, that means that it can be used in legal for trade applications. So it can be used for those purposes. The power is 12 to 24 volts DC. A lot of our other indicators, like a 205, 225, something like that, um, are made to be powered into a wall outlet, like 120 volts AC. The idea is with the 201, it's going to be typically mounted in a cabinet anyways, which is already going to have 12 or 24 volts uh, power readily available. The idea is we're just going to use the power supply that's already there. The excitation is 11.72 volts. Uh, some of our different indicators have different ones, like the 205, 210s have 9.6 volts, the, two, uh, the 225 is 12 volts. Um, the uh, 201 is closer to that 12 volt mark for like the 225 is. The 201 has uh, 10,000 divisions of resolution. It's designed to monitor these weights. It's not designed to go really high resolution, um, but it does definitely get the job done. It's definitely within legal for trade specifications. We do have adjustable weight filtering that works very similar as the rest of our cardinal indicators do. Uh, so to filter out uh, vibrations and scales, things like that. And the 201 also uses up to eight 350 ohm load cells. I want to make special mention of this because the 201 is something that's not designed to go on truck scale. Uh, whereas a 225, uh, in contrast, can hold uh, handle up to 14 load cells uh, just on its own. Um, that's something that's designed for truck scale operations. The 201 is most likely going to have something like four cells or three cells. It's going to be maybe on a silo or maybe on a floor scale, something like that. Um, it's just, that's kind of what it's made for. So eight uh, low cells is our maximum. There. As far as the display, the keypad, um, I, as I mentioned before, it has the seven different backlight colors and it can also be turned off. This can be used for a few different reasons. Uh, the most common are for check wear, which we'll see in just a little bit, where we can have the different zones, whether the weight is under the acceptable range, within the acceptable range, or over. Uh, we can have different colors associated with those. And also, uh, some installations have wanted to use different background colors to differentiate one scale from the next. As we saw on a, the slide previously, uh, 
there were three different 201s mounted in one cabinet. All three had different colors, uh, so that can indicate scale 1, 2, and 3, for, for instance. The 201 also has six digits of weight display. Um, on the display, it also has the units, uh, an enunciator, whether it's gross or net, and then a stable enunciator. And then along the bottom, it also has an indication of if an input is engaged or an output is engaged. So we can see all those things from the display of the 201. As far as buttons, there are six total. Three of them are set um, and, and dedicated to a particular function. Those are a zero, tear, and a net gross button. The other three are programmable, uh, so there are different options that those can be set from the 201. Um, an example, uh, the way this one uh, will be set here in just a little bit, we will set one of the buttons to be uh, a start for digital fill control. So that's uh, some of the kind of options like that. We can change units, things like that as well from those. As I mentioned before, the display for the 201 can be mounted remotely, so it's not, it does not always have to be on the 201 like this. Uh, the nice thing about the remote display is you can see it from the outside of the cabinet if desired, as opposed to having to open up a cabinet to be able to see the weight display. So different communication. Uh, the, uh, the main one is obviously the load cell because we want to get weight from a scale. There's two different basic connection types. We can do a six wire or four wire. Six wire is not going to be very commonly used in the 201. It's anything over 30 feet is what we recommend using six wires. Uh, that's using sense leads. So you'd have your two excitation, two signal, and two sense wires. And anything under 30 feet, which is more common uh, with the 201, is you can just use these sense jumpers. So it would just be a four wire connection, the excitation, and the signal wires. There's also a dead load boost. Uh, the 201 must see at least a half of a millivolt to operate properly. Uh, if we get really close to that, sometimes it can uh, give uh, erratic weights, things like that. Uh, we would see that if the scale platform that the 201 is connected to is really light. Uh, maybe it's made of a really light material or something like that. In order to, um, to be able to handle that better, the 201 can use the dead load boost jumper, which takes that little, that small signal, let's say it is a half a millivolt, and it boosts that, that load boost, um, increases it so that way the empty scale can have a better a uh, signal that the 201 can work with better. Also on the load cell terminal, there's a shield connection. This actually rarely gets used with the 201, but it is there in case it's needed. Uh, the shield terminal that's on the load cell connection would typically only be used if the load cell cable from the 201 to the scale base is really long, like several hundred feet long. Um, most, again, most times uh, the 201 is going to be in a cabinet that's fairly near the scale. Um, so it's actually better and cleaner of a connection if we mount the uh, shield wire to the, uh, to the actual case of the 201. In the example, in the um, 201 I have in this enclosure, I actually have it mounted to this screw right here. And that, again, just makes a cleaner connection. The weight readings uh, will be more consistent, uh, just overall better operation. As far as serial communication, the serial port is on the lower right of the 201. That can be RS-232 or RS-485, and these are both bi-directional if we set them up that way. Uh, the RS-485 is going to be used if we need to have um, the serial connection addressed, uh, kind of like an IP address over an Ethernet connection. Uh, so we can use uh, communicate with multiple devices over a single serial port, whereas RS-232 is communication between just one device and another point to point. With the bi-directional communication, that means that we can send the 201 commands. We can send commands to do things like zero the scale, set tear weights, um, in certain modes of operation, we can set send commands to do certain things in those modes of operation. There's a few different continuous data formats in the 201, which means we're able to uh, continuously send out weight from the 201 to a computer, to a PLC, or whatever device is needing that. You can set it to scoreboards, things like that as well. 
Um, I mentioned the on-demand, uh, the bi-directional communication. Um, we can send commands. Uh, we can tell the 201 to do things remotely. And the 201 also has a print function. Uh, we don't use it a whole lot on the 201, but it is there. We do have some people that use it and then really like it. Uh, we can print tickets, just like a regular weight ticket uh, that we might print from a 210. And also, that weight can be, instead of um, being sent out like we would for a ticket, uh, which has like character turns, line feeds, things like that, uh, things that tell the print to go to the next line, we can send that print data as a CSV output, uh, which means that it might have the weight, a comma, and then that it's gross, and comma, and the weight units, comma, things like that. So it's flexible that way. Um, something that you might use that for is sending weight data to a computer, that the computer might be able to see that comma separated information better than it would the other format. The 201 also has a USB connection, which is on the top right of the case right here. It is a mini USB cable and the communication oops, and the communication is basically exactly like the serial port. The settings are very similar. Uh, we can do the, the bi-directional communication. We can send the same commands. We can send continuous data out of that port. It just works exactly like the serial port does. The neat thing about the USB port is that it gives us an option to easily field upgrade the 201 software. It's not something that happens very often, but in the rare case that it does, uh, the 201 is actually, in my opinion, probably the easiest indicator we have to upgrade in the field. Uh, just communicate, uh, connect the USB, plug it into the computer. It's literally a matter of dragging and dropping a file into a folder, and it's done. As far as Ethernet communication, the standard 201 out of the box uses DH, it's set for DHCP, which means that whenever it connects to a network, it automatically obtains an IP address from that network. It can also be set for a static IP address going through the setup. And the nice thing about the DHCP is um, it can connect, communicate, or automatically connect with any network. And um, when the 201 boots up, it automatically tells you what the IP address is. So that way we can go like to the web page setup, which we'll see in a moment and we can go in, type in the IP address, and we can see exactly um, all the settings of the 201 and things like that. It's a really handy feature. The raw socket connectivity is something that we would use to communicate the 201, let's say, to an office-type computer. Um, the uh, raw socket connection works just like a serial port. We have the same commands um, that we do with the serial or like with the USB. Uh, we can send data continuously out of that port, um, so the communication looks exactly the same. It's just over Ethernet instead of a serial connection. For PLC communication, which the 201 is probably more commonly used for, uh, we use EIP, Ethernet, uh, Industrial Ethernet, or a Modbus TCP communication. With these, they have their own different commands that we can send. We can set tear weights, we can zero the scale, uh, sometimes we can even set target weights for digital fill control, things like that. Uh, but those are things that we can send from the PLC. Again, the commands will look different than the serial does, but a lot of those commands are, are very similar. They do the same function. The DAC communication, or the analog outputs and inputs, actually have my meter set up to view the analog output from the 201. We can set it up two ways. We can view or we can monitor the current, 4 to 20 milliamps, or we can view or monitor rather the voltage, 0 to 10 volts. And what that does is that voltage or that current uh, change based on the weight that is on the scale. We can also do an input, which uh, is an alternative to a load cell input. So with the 201, we can send out, so like right now, the scale is at zero, and it is sending out four milliamps the way I have it set up. We can also have it set to where that works in reverse. The 201 can actually receive an analog signal from another device, and then it can change the weights on the 201 based on that. That would be instead of being connected to a scale platform. So it can get the weights in a different way. So we do have that as an option. 
And the negative weight values, sometimes, um, let's say we're tracking the net weight on a scale. Um, sometimes if it's like a box that's usually on the scale that has a tear weight that's stored on the 201, if that box comes off, that weight reading might go negative. So with that, uh, some installations like to be able to track the negative weight. So in order to do that, it requires a setup from the web page. We can't use negative numbers in the 201. It's possible, but it requires the web page setup. I also want to take a moment just to kind of demonstrate what that DAC output looks like. So as I increase the weight on the 201, so right now the weight reading is 3,565 pounds, and my DAC output is 9.7 milliamps. So it tracked with the weight reading as it increased. The digital inputs and outputs. This is one place that we really get a lot of questions on as far as how it works, how it's connected, things like that. The one thing that is unique about the 201 is it always requires us to supply a source voltage. So if we have a 210 or a 225, we can actually pull the power to control the relays or whatever the outputs are connected to, we can pull that from the indicator itself. With the 201, we have to supply that voltage. Now, with that being said, it's usually not a big deal because again, these are typically installed in a cabinet where there's 12 or 24 volts, something like that, very readily available. So, but the, the key is it has to be supplied to the 201. The 201 does not supply the voltage itself. We can use inputs for remote key presses. Uh, similar to what the function keys were used for that we were talking about earlier, uh, we can set one to change units, or we can set one, a remote input to zero the scale, things like that, or to start a process like a digital fill control. This is where a lot of people um, assume that the 201 works like our other indicators. The outputs work off of a syncing type connection. Uh, so like with the 210 or 225, Whenever we want to engage a relay, let's say, uh, we uh, put voltage to an output. So we say, okay, well, here's 5 volts or 15 volts. Turn the relay on. With the 201, that voltage is actually always there to the relay. But what we do is we essentially connect the ground. Uh, so it, it has the same end result as far as what it can do, as far as controlling a relay, things like that. But the syncing output... Um, connects differently, which means that the wires go in different locations whenever we're wiring it up. And that's why I included this wiring diagram. Uh, it's, this is right out of the manual, but it, it, it illustrates that very well. Those outputs a lot of times can be used for either the check wire or the digital fill control, which we'll see some of that in just a few minutes also. So I want to look a little bit at the uh, web page setup for the 201. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my web browser. I'm going to key in the IP address for my 201, which in this case is 10.1.0.191. And again, I saw that whenever the 201 was booting up earlier. And so here we have the weight display for the 201. Uh, the background color matches the background for the display on the 201. Uh, we can actually use the buttons. So from here, I can zero the scale. Uh, you can see down here, it monitors the output. So um, right now, output one is engaged, and we can see that on the display here as well. I'm going to go through just a few of the settings. So here's a screen where we can set the, it says weighing input, so we can set the units, interval, decimal, capacity, things like that. One thing to note on here at the very top, it says read only, press cal button on device, and then refresh page. Any metrological parameters, things that are controlled by legal for trade um, um, applications, uh, require the 201 to be in a setup mode. So the calibration switch still has to be, the screw has to be removed and the switch has to be pushed in. And then if that was the case, then I could go in and I can set these settings however I wanted to. Here's the screen with the filtering. It's the same thing. It's read only. I cannot uh, change anything on here until I press the cal switch. The communication is set up from this web page as well. With the Ethernet, this is probably the easiest place to set up the Ethernet. Um, with the 201 display, 
you can imagine we can only see one thing at a time. And, and you can see here, there's a lot of settings to go through, especially when you start looking at the IP address, where the IP address has four parts just for the IP address, things like that. So here we can turn the Ethernet on or off. Uh, we can turn the raw socket connection on or off, the Ethernet IP on, on or off, and then the same with the Modbus. And we can set, uh, there's different things, um, st different settings we can have for each of those as well. But again, um, for most people that work with the 201 very much, they start using the web page because it's just a lot easier to work with, especially with the Ethernet settings and, and really with, with pretty much all the settings. The USB, um, again, we can set this for on-demand, which would be that bi-directional communication. We can send it a command, um, or we can set it for a continuous output. Serial port is the same way. Um, we talked about the printing. There's a couple of pages for that the digital inputs and outputs. So right now it's set for if I were to um, engage input one, it would change the units on the 201. There's a, some different selections there. Uh, so if you click the drop down arrow, there's you can see what the different selections are there. Right now I have this set up to uh, check wire mode. When it's in the under, it out engages output one. When it's in the accept range, it engages output two and uh, outputs three and four whenever the it engages, uh, are engaged whenever it's in the over range. So we can go back to the home screen. So my accept range is 1000 to 2500. So you can see here, my output went from uh, output one to output two. My background color changed from yellow to green, and now if I go above 2500, you'll see three and four come on, and my screen will change to red. So we're seeing the same thing working. Um, we're just kind of seeing it at different times, 201. And then as far as the analog output, um, I was talking about that a moment ago. I have this set to track gross weight. Um, this can also be used as a diagnostic feature. I can set, so right now my display shows 8.1 milliamps. If I change this DAC1, which is the, uh, the current, if I set it to 12 milliamps and I click submit, now my meter is showing 12.0 milliamps. Um, that's a diagnostic feature. That way, if the PLC is expecting a certain milliamp, uh, a current rating, um, it can the PLC can be set based off of those values. The 201 actually has the ability to maintain a log. Um, if the uh, a log of like errors and um, event count, uh, event captures, things like that. So with this, the 201, um, if you install a micro SD card on the inside of the 201, it will um, keep a file log of different, somebody pressed the zero key, things like that. And that is actually also viewable from the home screen. Down at the bottom, there's a, a section that says log. And so the last couple of things that I did were um, I changed the weight re uh, the uh, over under accept. Um, I changed the setting for the DAC output and just some things like that. It shows me so somebody can go to this page and see oh it's not reading correctly because somebody pressed the zero or because somebody calibrated the scale and they were not supposed to. You can see things like that from this log. And again, if the um, the micro SD card was installed, there's actually a file of that. You can also look at the and change the settings for the individual modes of operation. So here's what we have for the check layer. We can enable it, we can set what the acceptable range is, and then we can select the colors for each range. So in this case, now we have the yellow for the under, green for accept, and red for over. From the preferences, uh, this is where we set the uh, function keys. Those ones that I mentioned we could set for different things. 
So right now F1 is assigned to uh, for the digital fill control process to start it. Uh, you can assign one for units, one for printing, things like that. And the digital fill control, we can set those settings here as well as far as target weights, things like that. So from this screen, this is the diagnostic screen on the setup uh, on the setup web page. Um, I will need to access it by pressing the calibration button. If I can find it. So the 201 goes to setup. And I'm going to refresh this page. I have different options here. What this, what these options allow me to do, like one says choose file, one says export. What these allow me to do is import settings that I've previously used on the 201. So if the 201 is something that um, you have a use for where you have multiple of the same thing, you can configure one 201 and then save that information, uh, setup, um, just everything as far as outputs, inputs, and you can duplicate the one 201 to the next really useful feature. So for an example, I'm going to do choose file. I'm going to find my digital fill control, double click that, and I'm going to do send configuration. And so now this is configured for digital fill control. So if I press F1, it teared the scale and it's now ready for me to start filling. So, I don't know if you could hear, but when I hit about 2800, the relay clicked to the next one because the filling process was complete. So, that's an example of how to use the digital fill control and also how to use that web page. So, those are some examples of how to use the web page setup. Um, so, we saw how to use the, uh, the web page to import new settings, and the export works very similar. We just click export instead of import and select the file name, it's as simple as that. So as far as modes of operation, we saw the check where just a moment ago, but just to kind of talk about it a moment, um, it does have the three zones, under, except, and over. We do have the different backlight colors. Again, there's seven different ones to choose from, so they can be set however you prefer. Um, they do engage outputs, we saw that earlier. And we can also assign the presets um, either on the 201 using the keypad, or we can do that from the web page as well. So it really kind of helps uh, make things a little easier, in my opinion, using the web page. As far as digital fill control, we can do one speed or two. Uh, so that would be a fast and a slow fill. We can do a cumulative or decumulative weighing. And the difference in those two is a cumulative weighing means you have a scale and then you're putting material onto that scale. It's accumulating weight. The decumulative means that the scale is actually like on a hopper or on a tank of some sort. And so in that case, you're actually monitoring the weight that's coming out of that uh, scale. So the difference is when the scale weight is actually decreasing, the weight reading on the 201 would be increasing. That's what the decumulative does. Uh, the dump gate feature works as, uh, so if we're doing an accumulative, we might have a large hopper that's dumping or that's uh, filling a smaller weight hopper. And once the target weight is reached in that smaller hopper, uh, then the 201 can engage a dump gate. So we fill that hopper and then dump out of that hopper. That's what the dump gate does. We can do trim, which basically accounts for free falling material from one place to the next. Uh, we do have the ability to auto print if we're doing digital fill control to keep a record of uh, the different filling that has happened. And I mentioned get and set commands. So we can actually, with the digital fill control, um, retrieve what the target weights are set to. Uh, so if somebody wants to know if anybody's messed with the settings, they can go on to the web page or they can send a command that says, what is this set to? And they can see that. And they can also change that. They can also send commands to set target weights like the fast fill or the slow fill or the trim value, things like that. I wanted to include this picture because it's a really good example of some of the types of installations we see the 201 in. This is actually only half of this installation. Uh, this is the bottom half 
Um, if we had the full picture, the top half looks just like this. There's six more 201s and a whole rat's nest of cables on the right. The reason I want to mention this is because this um, gives us some problems that are not unique to the 201. Um, I shouldn't say problems, some things that we need to be aware of with the 201 um, that are not unique to the 201, but they are things that we see more commonly because of the way the 201 is, is uh, mounted. So the 201 we mentioned earlier that it has a very small profile, uh, small space, that means you can fix several of them close together. We mentioned all the communication options, which means you can potentially have a lot of cables going to each 201, kind of like we see here. Uh, there's Ethernet, and on the bottom we have the load cell connections. Um, I believe on some of the ones on top there was some serial communication, things like that. So we have like relays and terminals, things like that on the right. A lot of wires going in a lot of different places. Which brings us to these things that we have to be very careful of. Um, the load cell and the power cable, um, we do not want those ever running parallel with each other. Um, if they have to run parallel with each other, we want them to be at least 24 inches apart. Which, I say that to some people and they kind of laugh at me because the cabinet is only so big. You know, some, some cabinets we don't have 24 inches. So what we want to do in those cases, if we cannot keep them very far apart, if they have to intersect with each other, we want that intersection to be perpendicular. We don't want them to be parallel with each other. That helps cut down on noise and instances where we just can't get away from having power um, close to the load cell cable. Along with that, I want to mention that um, it doesn't always just affect the weight reading whenever we have noise. Typically, that's what we see if we have noise on the, on the home run cable. With the 201, um, it can actually cause the 201 to reset itself if it sees noise. Um, I've had some customers that I've talked to that have had just exactly that happening. It would reset itself, reset itself, reset itself. And uh, what we ended up doing to get it to go away is I had them actually take the 201 out of the enclosure and kind of just set it over to the side, away from everything else. As soon as the load cell cable was had a, a good amount of distance between that and the power cable, it worked fine. So what the customer was able to do, uh, they were able to just reroute, I think they rerouted the power, and everything worked great after that. So that's one of those things that's, it's, again, it's not unique to the 201 because our other indicators and any indicator is the same way. Um, but it's just more commonly seen in the 201 because we're work, usually working with a lot of different things in a very uh, confined space. And also I want to mention rules of thumb for grounding. The basic idea for grounding on the 201 in a enclosure is that everything should be going back to the AC ground. So on the back of the 201, we talked about the DIN rail connection. Most times in a cabinet, the DIN rail is connected to the AC ground. So the 201 is automatically connected to the AC ground. Um, the, or the earth ground rather. The cabinet, the enclosure itself, the outside is going to be the same way. Uh, in the example I have here, the, there's a green wire that goes from the um, case of the 201 to the enclosure itself. So everything is going back to this, which goes back to the ground, and just all the ground is tied together. We want that because that really helps us have a really clean uh, communication and everything uh, works a lot more smooth when everything goes back to that same ground. With all that being said, I appreciate your time today and uh, learning some more about the 201. I hope this was beneficial for you.